Welcome back, geology fans. As rocks are disturbed by geologic forces and get tilted, folded, rotated from their original position, they can end up in pretty complicated patterns. An originally folded system can get folded again in another way. What if we want to erase the effects of the latter folding to get a better idea of the original folding? Or even erase that folding to get back to original structure? Stereonets to the rescue again, using a technique called rotation. We can rotate data around a horizontal axis or a vertical axis. Of course, we can have more complicated axes, but they can be separated into vertical and horizontal rotation components, which we will do at the end of this video. What we are going to do here is rotate our data through a certain axis of rotation, a certain degree of angle clockwise or counterclockwise. And I don't mean the kind of rotation we have been doing so far, which is really revolution of the transparency, not rotation of the data contained. Again, these lines going north-south are called great circles, and the east-west trending lines are the small circles, which we'll use a bit today. Let's start simple and resolve to rotate our data around a vertical axis. We consider the vertical axis of rotation to go through the center of our stereo net, and we simply rotate data around that axis. We will use either the point expression of a line or the pole from a plane, but plot either one for the current position of the feature, and we will label it D for datum. Let's say you think this area got rotated 30 degrees counterclockwise. To undo this motion, we want to rotate our datum back 30 degrees clockwise. We take the point or pole and place it over a cardinal line, and then count 30 degrees in a clockwise direction, and mark that point and label it D prime. And note where D prime is expressed on the outer circle, and put a tick mark there. You can check by putting D prime on a cardinal line, and the tick mark should be at the end of that line. And count in and the D prime dip angle should be the same as the D uh, dip angle because we didn't change that rotating around a vertical axis. Okay, rotate all back to proper orientation and D is in the current position and D prime is the original orientation of the lineation or the original pole position of the plane depending on what you're working with. Rotation around a horizontal axis is only slightly more difficult. We're going to rotate around an axis that is horizontal, and let's say we're going to have one uh, horizontal axis pointing 20 degrees. And once we've noted the direction of the horizontal rotation, we imagine looking in that direction. We're going to look into 20 degrees north uh, when we talk about rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. Let's say we have a linear datum at 290.35. So we quickly mark the point because we already know how to do that and label it L. And the rotation axis has been determined to be at an axis oriented at 20 degrees northeast. And we're going to rotate 30 degrees counterclockwise. So place a tick mark at 20 degrees and rotate the transparency so this axis mark is at the North Pole. Which we're going to rotate around. So to rotate around the central line, you will need to take your point along its small circle. We know this got rotated 30 degrees counterclockwise, so we need to go clockwise, looking towards the north, 30 degrees to end up at this shallower dipping point at 5 degrees, and label it L prime. Revolve back to original orientation, and you see the present position of the lineation at L, and the original position at L prime. Rotating a plane instead of a line around a horizontal axis is dependent on if the axis of rotation is at the same strike as the plane, in which case only the dip will change when you rotate, not the strike, or if the axis of rotation is off of strike, in which case both strike and dip of the plane will change as we rotate around that kind of horizontal axis. Let's start with the axis of rotation going parallel to the strike of our planar feature, which we'll put at 2020, and therefore the axis of rotation will also be at 20. We think there has been 30 degree counterclockwise rotation looking in the direction of 20 northeast, so we will rotate clockwise 30 degrees around this axis to correct. Before starting any of these problems, or even the problems mentioned in the previous episode, it is useful to try to visualize the problem first and it might help you to use your hands for planes and fingers or pencils or something for lines. Uh, here our plane is striking at 20, 
So the edge of our hand is placed with fingers pointing up and to the right at 20, and then take that hand about 20 degrees below horizontal, and that is the plane that needs to be rotated. If we are going to rotate counterclockwise, looking towards the fingers, the dip is going to get shallower. And if we went 20 degrees, we would end up at horizontal, but we're going 30 degrees, so we're going to tip past horizontal. So let's back up and just try the easier case of going 30 degrees clockwise. Uh, we first draw in our planar curve of 2020 and see our hand gesture did a good job approximating that. Uh, rotate the plane so it strikes north-south. And then if we're going clockwise, we step inward. So let's try stepping it into a steeper dip 30 degrees. And we end up here at 50 degree dip. I revolve transparency back to proper orientation, and that is the rotated plane in proper perspective. The strike has not changed, only the dip. But we really wanted to go 30 degrees counterclockwise, so go back and we step to the right 20 to hit the edge, and then another 10 starting from the exact opposite side of the net, and end up with this west dip of 10 degrees. And when put in a proper position, we see that a 10 degree dip to the northwest, still tr striking at 20 because that doesn't change. We don't change the strike of a plane with a horizontal rotation parallel to the strike, only the dip of the plane. Uh, you can also use the pole of the plane and shift it in the same manner to the left for clockwise and to the right for counterclockwise and flip to the opposite side if you hit the edge. Now for the more complicated plane that has been tilted on an axis at an angle to the strike of our plane, an axis oblique to strike. Let's say we have a plane at 2070 and want to rotate that plane 30 degrees counterclockwise around an axis of 350 azimuth. Again, visualize the plane as steeply dipping to the east-southeast, but our axis is off to the left at 350, and we want to rotate around that axis in a counterclockwise manner 30 degrees. So let's see how this goes. Obviously, plot your plane, and we'll do it as a pole, and mark the axis of rotation. Revolve to put the axis of rotation north, and now the pole lies on a new small circle. To go counterclockwise, we slide this point along its small circle, 30 degrees to the right, and end up here, the original position before rotation happened. By the way, we can draw the curve of a plane from its pole by placing this new pole on the equatorial line, counting 90 degrees to the right, and mark the corresponding great circle arc going through that point. Rotate everything back to proper orientation, and see you have rotated the plane from 2070 to 3045. I guess our hand example did okay. Clearly, one of our most common rotations will be to take tilted rock back to horizontal, in which case you take the plane and march it back to the outer circle. If beds are tilted but not overturned, the pole will return to the closest edge of the outer circle. If the beds are overturned, you will need to tilt them back up to vertical. Uh, taking the pole through the center of the stereo net and all the way over to the other side of the outer circle. And what if there is a lineation measured on one of these surfaces being rotated? Clearly, if a lineation is on a surface before you perform the rotation, it should still be on that surface after rotation. Let's challenge ourselves with an overturned bed of 33040, which has a lineation on its surface with a rake of 30 degrees northwest. Uh, what was the orientation of this lineation when the bed was originally horizontal? Visualize the problem that there's a plane dipping down to the left and on it is a lineation, and recall that a lineation parallel to strike is zero degree rake, and a lineation parallel to dip is 90 degrees rake. So a 30 degree rake will take us up and to the left over here in the northwest quadrant. We're overturned, so to get back to original position, we assume the axis of rotation is coincident with a strike, which is more often the case if you think about it, and rotate a full 50 degrees to get back to vertical, and then another 90 to get back to horizontal. Hmm. Okay, let's plot our plane and the lineation on that plane, as was demonstrated in the previous episode. 
orient the strike of our plane north-south, and to get back to horizontal, we clearly have to go left a full 140 degrees across to end up on the far rim of the outer circle in original horizontal position. But how about this point representing our lineation? It will follow this small circle 140 degrees to meet up with its plane over on the right, and we mark that point, which we can already tell what will happen when we take it back to a proper orientation. The lineation was trending directly north, or north-south. But sometimes we need to rotate around a tilted axis, not completely vertical nor horizontal. How do we handle this? Well, first we rotate to the horizontal, or to the vertical if you like, but we will rotate our tilted axis to horizontal around a new axis that is horizontal and orthogonal to that main tilted axis. Once we perform the required rotation around this horizontally placed axis, we rotate the whole thing back down to the original position. So let's imagine some dipping beds, maybe on the flank of a dipping fold, and we want to flatten that flank back out along an axis parallel to the fold axis. The beds are at 120 40, and we want to rotate them around an axis, the fold hinge, which has a trend of 260 and a plunge of 30 degrees. And we're going to do the rotation counterclockwise, a total of 40 degrees. Try to visualize this one again. 120 40 for the plane, and 260 30 for the axis of rotation. And we want to go about 40 degrees clockwise. Let's give it a try. Plot our plane, the limb of the fold, if you will, as a pole, and call it P. And now plot the axis of rotation, the hinge of the fold, if you will, and call it R. First we rotate the axis up to horizontal and drag our plane along for the ride. So revolve the transparency so our axis of rotation R is on either the east or west equatorial line, and take it 30 degrees up, in this case to the left, to get to horizontal, and mark that point and call it R prime. Now bring P along its small circle, 30 degrees, going along for the ride to its new position, P prime. Now, remembering how we horizontally rotate, we revolve R prime over to north, and then rotate P prime counterclockwise 40 degrees by going that amount to the right along its not so small circle, pretty close to the equatorial line. Remember, we're rotating around R prime so it does not move as we move P prime. But now we revolve R prime all the way back to 270 west and count in 30 degrees to get back to the original orientation, which means we return to R. But we have to move P prime in a similar manner, being dragged along with it, along its small circle, to end up at P double prime, the final position of the pole of our plane. Draw in the great circle if you want, and rotate back to get your final actual position of the plane. Clearly, using horizontal, vertical, and inclined axes of rotation, you can unfold any fold or refold them if you want. Well, that was a lot of rotating, so ruminate on that, and believe it or not, we have a little bit more to say about stereo nets before moving on. So look forward to new projections when we come back next time, here on Earth Explorations.